Hey, Canna Bros and Canna Babes, you're stepping into the world of elevated conversations on the Canna Bros podcast. I'm your host, Jarrell, joined by the one and only dopest EA himself, Corey. And together, we're your guides through the highs and depths of the Cannaverse. Today, we're diving into Florida, who's on the verge. Could it be the next state to legalize cannabis? Infrastructure hurdles? There's a massive problem with states struggling with timely license processing. New York likes up unveiling the Smoke Out Act bill, targeting the unlicensed operations that the city and the state has all together. California's bold move, the 2188 Assembly Bill, shakes up workplace cannabis policies and more. So join your favorite two names looking to put you on game with difference-making strategies and positive financial guidance. Grab your favorite strain, open your notes app, and kick back for another episode of the Cannabras Podcast. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Happy New Year from the Cannabras Media, the Cannabras Podcast. Happy New Year from Jarrell. And Corey. And the producer. <laughs> hey. We got Carter in the building. So, hey, man, we just wanted to definitely make sure that y'all know that uh, we appreciate y'all bringing in this new year and saying, yo, I'm going to check out some some Cannabras podcast right now. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's straight straight up just like that, man. No, um, yeah, happy new year, man. I know we were actually together. Uh if you actually don't follow the Canter Bros on social media when you really should be. Should uh, be. Yeah, you really should be. We were on IG, went live on IG right as the ball drop, as they say. Um, in, in the in the new light box. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> in a new light box. And we were just uh, you know what I'm saying, just having a conversation about uh, things that we accomplished in 2023 and what 2024 has in store for us, or as far as we could see, at least, right? Yep. That's pretty dope. One thing that was super dope uh, that we wanted to do to immediately start switching up and in, into kind of, uh, I guess, sharpen our craft or sharpen the, our offering to the people is start to change and evolve uh, with this podcast and what it is. You know, yep. um, we know that we have a hell of a producer. So, in this moment right now, this is the very first Cannabras podcast where you don't just hear me and Corey. Yep. Yeah. Right now, we want to introduce the man, uh, the... Let's get it started. We want to introduce the man himself, the person that's behind all of uh, all of the amazing Cannabras graphics, the, uh, the amazing Cannabras sound... What else, Corey? The just the creativity, the imagination, many of the humor behind the scenes, man. All the transitions, the cuts, all the sound quality, all all of that. Yeah, plus we, more. All that, man. You you y'all gonna get to know him. You gonna get to love him. Uh, you know he's family. This is the Canterbury's Media's own producer, Carter Wallace. Make some noise right now. What's up, guys? <laughs> What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> yeah, hey, they going crazy right now for you. <laughs> Carter, what's up? Carter. I'm chilling. Chilling. Oh, man, we know we've been we've been waiting for this one. You know, it, yes. We have some crazy conversations all the time. Uh, <laughs> and we're like, hey, bro, Carter ain't got a mic in front of this him. This fool needs a mic. He yeah. needs a mic. And we yeah, called him out. I called you out on the last, I uh, was it two episodes, two, two episodes, two episodes yeah. ago, Maybe right? Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our last uh, sit down audio podcast that we recorded, I definitely called you out on that. Um, mm -hmm. And here you are with the mic, man. So yeah. thanks for showing up today. Oh, shit. <laughs> he said, "New year, new me. <laughs> new year, me. New me, but same old Carter. Y'all know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, man. But yeah, hey, you know, we just getting ready to get into it. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm excited again for this year, and and we got some stuff coming for y'all. So make sure that y'all don't snooze at all." We got to hit that subscribe button. We need you to hit that subscribe button, tap the like, and share the goodness with your people, with your crew. We're building a movement over here, and we want all of y'all into this. And let's not forget to spread the word on social media. Uh, snap a screenshot, tag us, and let the world know where the real conversations are going down. Yeah, for sure. And we see you. We see you. We appreciate you. And together, we're taking this to the next level. So let's make it happen, Canterbras Nation. Let's get it. All right, Cannabras and Cannababes, you know what time it is. We're about to take you on a quick breather, but don't go anywhere because we've got something special coming up. 
And you know we never disappoint. Never disappoint, Corey. Stay tuned for a word from our incredible sponsor, Harvest AF Financial Consulting, where they say, we're with you from seed to success. Trust me, you won't want to miss what we got in store for you. So we'll see you then. Ever wondered why, despite careful financial planning, your tax bills seem higher than they should be? The key lies in strategic tax planning, an often overlooked aspect of financial management that can significantly reduce your tax liabilities. Many believe that their tax professionals are actively working to minimize their tax payments all year round. Unfortunately, the reality often centers around compliance, not savings. This changes now with our groundbreaking seed to success method. Did you know many taxpayers overpay due to incomplete or incorrect tax filings? Imagine discovering that you could have saved significantly by adjusting just a few entries on your tax returns. Every client, whether new or long-standing, deserves smart tax decisions. With Seed to Success, you'll explore options and make informed choices, potentially reducing your tax liabilities. Ready to elevate your tax planning? Join us now and unlock your financial potential. Welcome back, fam. Hope you enjoyed the little break. Now, let's dive back into the Canabras universe. We got some real talk and exciting discussions lined up for you. You know how we do it. Keeping it smooth. Keeping it swaggy. <laughs> keeping it swaggy, Corey. And speaking of smooth, big shout out to our amazing sponsor for keeping the vibes right and keeping that money in business owners' pockets. Now, let's jump back into the convo with this week's edition of Word on the street. Yo, let's talk about what we got for word on the street today, Carter. Yes. Uh, so the next state to legalize, you want to do that one? Yeah, let's talk about it. So uh, we were uh, so off offline. We were, I know we were talking about uh, the next state to legalize. They say they say it just might be Florida. Yeah. They say it just might be Florida. You know, Florida already has a uh, medical program. And we got a lot of people that we've connected with uh, in our time from Florida who uh, they got movements out there, man. Yep. So it's really dope to see that, you know, hey, man, Florida, Florida is on high on that predictions list. Uh, you know, MJ Biz Daily is talking about uh, Florida being one of the easy predictions uh, to make when it comes to legalization and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, what, what do we think about uh, Florida, man, and, and, and their in their path to legalization. It's like it's, they, they it's went. It's funny because you said Florida man. And every time I hear Florida man. I st- start blinking red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Florida man. Um, no, I mean, that's that's going to be huge. I think uh, just based off of the location of Florida, um, it's a big tourist destination, at least the southern part of Florida, um, as well as the demographics of Florida, it's, it's a melting pot. So a lot of the communities that normally wouldn't have access to the plant or uh, from from different countries and so on and so forth can now come to Florida and access that same, my bad, that same um, uh, flower or uh, I don't throw off my, the, the whole uh, notification threw me off. That's, a, that's why yeah. you got to look those bad boys, like, right? Hey. <laughs> Look, but yeah, the they they get access to that plant, man. And I, I think that's gonna be big on the uh, the consumption side, and then on the federal on the business federal side, I think that's huge because that's again one more state that's showing the federal government like, hey, we're on board, right, right. So it's time. Yep. And it, it got to go state by state. It's like a, after a while, you'll be like, it's an overwhelming majority. What's up? No, I'm just thinking of. So we did this. Uh, we did the one of the Watts or word on the streets. Yeah, yeah, with yeah. A, uh, bubble gum. Oh yeah, I yeah. Forgot his the Santos. Santos. Yeah. I wonder how he feels about this sucker. <laughs> <laughs> he probably not happy about it. They know they were talking about um, on the on the article. It said a legalization measure backed by True Leaf Cannabis. We've heard of True Leaf Cannabis. Um, is angling to appear on the uh, November 2024 ballot, um, but there's a high bar to meet. I think that's a pun intended there. 
<laughs> says recent changes to the state's uh, constitution means that 60% of voters or a 20 point victory is required to pass the proposed constitutional amendment. Um, that also assumes the measure survives a constitutional challenge now before the Florida Supreme Court. So, of course, you know how these things go. There's layers to it, but the people in the know say that uh, Florida just might be up next. So, hey, man, shout out to Florida, man. Uh, glad that glad that they uh, are on that journey to make it happen. You just, you know, yeah. Everybody going to be at Disney World. Hi. <laughs> hi. hi. Hey. Er. That's the only way you can enjoy that. I was just hey. about to say Ooh. hi, er. That's, hey, yeah, that's a, that's a great point. <laughs> that's a great point. Look, with Mi- Mickey, Goofy, all of them going to be lit. Mm. Yeah, that's going to be crazy. Pluto smoking on Pluto. that's funny that's funny but yeah man um got some snow white (laughs) wait that's a a different one never mind that's a different drug (laughs) (laughs) yeah man um but what else we got for word on the street um oh we were you know what forget now that i think about this is actual word on the street because we were out when we were out in tulsa for the uh cowboy cup we linked up with deborah uh, Deborah Lynn from um, Blue Sky Bank. Um, and so they're into cannabis banking. So if you don't know about Blue Sky Bank, that's just some uh, something for you to look out uh, for if you're in the Oklahoma area, maybe the Tulsa area, OKC uh, market. I know they're outside of OKC, but they're definitely in Tulsa. But shout out to Blue Sky Bank and shout out to Deborah Lynn. Plug. Um, but we were talking about... Um, the issue with license and license applications while we were out there, um, one thing that was crazy, and we did this over it was over a delicious breakfast, but it was a real conversation um, because it's one thing to say you're not allowing um, – there there is nothing to apply to, right, when we talk about applications. But it's another thing when you allow business owners to apply uh, for the correct licensing so that they can operate, you know, with no problems, but then – you end up not having the correct infrastructure to allow them to actually get their stuff passed in a reasonable amount of time. So it's like, so you damned if you do, damned if you don't. You know, so like if I didn't, if I just decided to operate illegally, it would have been a problem, of course, right? But the fact that I decided to apply for my license correctly, mm-hmm. I did it in, in, a, in good enough time as soon as it was open, but now the line, the <laughs> the wait line is wrapped around the corner like they dropping a, a fresh pair of J's. Yeah, you know? that's what's going to drive the black market to success. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know what, man, I'm, I'm tired of fighting this uphill battle, trying to do things right when, you know, I know so-and-so is making a fortune and not having to deal with any of these barriers and they're, they're having a good time. So, you know, I'm fed up and I'm going illegitimate. I'm going to that, that area and, and let, let me ask you, making my money. How, how black market is this? Is this like full black market or is this like just cutting taxes? How black market? Yeah. Like, are they doing a... You mean like, like the, the people that yeah, choose the, not to apply like the, for license? Like the plug? Yeah, like the plug. Like, okay. Yeah. So because when, when I say like black market, I, I'm, I'm saying like anybody that is foregoing either renewing their license or selling when they don't have the legal authority by the state to do so. Yeah. So a- after that point, I mean, you're you're black market. Yeah, it's either true. Yeah. It's a true or false thing. Yeah, it's not. You know, you're, there's no maybe in this. Yeah, you either have the proper licensing or you don't. And if you don't, then you just appear to be a legitimate business. Yeah, but you're not operating legally. Yeah, so. they, and they call that like gray market. There you, you go. Know, like, the gray market where you like, let's say you're legal, but you're doing some illegal stuff, but you're blending that with the legal stuff and. Yeah, they, but that's an easy target, bro. They, I feel like they're gonna go after those businesses first. Yeah, well, you know, because it's easy because at least they have you somewhat on some kind of document, mm-hmm. right? Like, like when you're in the gray market, you're doing some things legally, like you said, mm-hmm. and some things illegally. Mm-hmm. So if you're, do, you know, for everything that you're doing legal, they're like, cool, got you. We got all your information, all this stuff, but just the, you're not 
operating a hundred percent, you know, in the right. So that they gotta sometimes they gotta get audited first though, because like let's say you got a lot of supply, right, mm. and the demand isn't high enough for you to get rid of all your supply. So I, I'm imagining like a cultivator. So you got all this weed that you're sitting on, right? But there's not enough consumption on the legal side, so you go ahead and sell it to some a black market entity. And then so you so cause so you can get rid of it, you still make your money, and you know, you're you're happy until that audit happens and they're like, so how did you generate all this extra revenue? Come on, man. And this ain't nothing new. Business and we ain't trying to, you know, be no whistleblowers or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. But y'all already know what's going on in the streets. Like, that's normal, you know, because because we already understand that, hey, if something tests wrong, you're supposed to burn it. Is that stuff really getting burnt? You know what I mean? Uh, you have an overflow of something else. It's or gotta, It's got to be down the drain. Y- yeah. yeah. And down the drain means somehow I'm going to get my hands on it in Texas. Now, how did I do that? <laughs> how did I do that? Right? <laughs> Somebody was like, hey, man, uh, I'm not selling it to you, but I'm going to leave it in the back of this open van, and you can leave the money. <laughs> you could if if you want to be nice, a good Samaritan, you could leave me the money for all the free samples hey, you take out. You see the that? You see that uh, tip jar over there? Yeah, yeah, just go ahead and stuff that with the full amount that we discuss <laughs> over that. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, man, no no whistleblowing, no whistleblowing. Y'all already doing it, man. We just calling it for what it is, which is Ill- illegal. So you know, make sure you <laughs> that you get on top of that, so you don't have them type of problems. But at the same time, the the state, the state has to get on top of making sure they properly staff these departments, that they really get behind and put the resources and the knowledge and everything behind these initiatives so that these applicant applicants can actually successfully get their licenses on time before they get penalized by y'all again. Right. So make it make sense. Make it make sense. Man, in other news for Word on the Street today, um, New York, they got this thing called the Smoke Out Act bill. Mm-hmm. Yo, shout out to marijuanamoment.net. Um, they have this story that's up right now um, that actually came out. And it said, uh, New York local governments could shut down unlicensed marijuana businesses under new Smoke Out Act bill. Um, just a little bit more information about this bill. Uh, it's introduced uh, as New York regulators move to process hundreds of marijuana business license applications. So hence why that's kind of the theme of this word on the street. Um, over a dozen new cannabis retailers opened in December alone, following a settlement agreement lifting an injunction that had imposed a months-long licensing blockade. Right. So they're like, OK, we had to stop it. It's kind of like right. we had to stop the bleeding and then we can kind of figure out right. what's going on here. Um, this is just a quote from uh, Governor Kathy Hochul. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but she says our top priority is to grow and expand New York's legal cannabis industry while they crack down on the illicit storefronts that continue to plague communities. Corey, weren't you in New York and you were telling me about this? Bro, there was we. Everywhere. I mean. <laughs> what what year did you go to New York? Like five months ago. Yeah, we talking, so in 2023. Yeah, 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 was, yeah back it, half. Yeah, it was, it was, I think it was like June, July. Crazy. And you said it was weed everywhere. I remember you Bruh, telling me yeah, it was, it on, was on the corner everywhere. It was weed everywhere, man. Like, it was funny because I had heard the mayor, um, he's like, it smells like weed everywhere you go, right? You know, being in, in Texas, I was like, he's over exaggerating. <laughs> and then I, uh, <laughs> hey, hey, Mayor Adams, stop snitching. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I got off the subway, and I'm in uh, New York City. And as soon as you come up the stairs, it's like, Bow. oh my god, it's weed. I mean, you, it's it's pungent. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, and like. There was a, every block had a smoke shop dispensary set up. And, and I was talking to my wife. I was like, how do they survive? Like, how is there so many dispensaries and su- uh, a high concentration of dispensaries in such a small area? Right. Crazy. It's like how, I mean. did I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah, did, ahead, they, uh, did they uh, say anything about how many dispensaries are in 
New York itself? It's no way of knowing because there's so many. So you have the legal ones. You can you can say how many legal ones there are, but then they had you know there's so many illegal shops that are set up that you like from face value you can't tell if they're legal or not, right? Mm, mm. And so there is just like, and they're popping up all over the place. And we were into we went inside Central Park. I mean, people, they didn't even have a tent. They had a, a fold-out table, Crazy. some chairs, and then they're like pre-rolls everywhere. Like, across, the, like, hey, y'all want some pre-rolls? And and that, now, I don't know if they were, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes, but let's, let's, let's question other things. <laughs> I don't know if they were illegal or not, but I, but. They could have been illegal. That's, yeah. what, that's what I'm saying. No, you ain't lying. Because they say, uh, uh, according to this report, they said end of the year report uh, from the New York's Office of Cannabis Management found that consumers purchased more than 3.5 million marijuana products during 2023. That's crazy. Like, there's so much going on. They're like, illicit products are worth an estimate estimated $56 million dollars. Over eleven thousand pounds that they uh, were. That's Seized. what they could track. Yeah, I don't know. And yeah. see, this is the thing. It's like the application process to get a license is already difficult. To get selected, you know, of course, you got the war on drugs. You got the social equity side. You got all that, right? You trying to compete, but when you have all these, you know, illegal shops popping up. And, you know, you, the the cost with the taxes and everything, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know how, how they're pricing, but let's say it's a, I'm just going to say a hundred dollars for uh, three and a half. <laughs> yeah. Like that. You like how I did that? <laughs> um, uh, I know that's ex- expensive, but. Like imagine, so let's say it's a hundred dollars, but then you got one of the illegal shops selling it for forty, right? And yeah. you're like, well, look, I'm going there. Like, why am I going to pay a hundred dollars? I I can go here and buy it, and and that's that's taking the revenue away from the business owners that already got a. I mean, like I said, they're getting taxed. All their money's getting taxed. Mm-hmm. So, are you are you talking about so a hundred bucks for legal? Yeah, or a hundred bucks for legal black. Okay. Legal. Yeah. It's it's almost like the uh the medical side of Texas. But I we don't have to open up that can of worms. Well, it's, yeah. Mm, and and also when, when I say a, like I just made up a hundred. No, no. Yeah. It's but it's almost yeah. 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 Talk about it. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's almost six. Exactly. Yeah. And it's it's just like it, how do you how do you compete unless they ha- enforce the smoke act? Yeah, yeah. And and in the smoke act, it says they can shut you down immediately. They walk into your shop and they, they ain't s- no warning, no nothing. Yeah, and they see like, oh no, this this is a front. This is an illegal mm. operation. Yeah, it's no like citation. You know, you got this many days to get compliant. It's like, no, nah, you shut mm. down. Dang, and yeah, that's crazy. So hopefully, uh, those of you that have licenses. Have all your your ducks in a row because <laughs> you, you gonna get shut up. See, and that, that's the crazy thing though, because a lot of time I'm glad you said that the people that do have licenses hope you have your ducks in a row because you could actually have a license but be super unorganized. Mm-hmm. And you know, we we actually had you know clients that were you know selling in New York and things like that too. And the question came up of, of like, okay, how does this actually work? They're like, oh yeah, we just go in and we set up a booth that we set up a table and all this stuff, and that's how we get it off. I said, boy, you know, they say the wild, wild west. I don't know what the equivalent of it is for New York, but it feels like it would be this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, like, they just they were just going at it, bro. They set up, and that that's just that style of hustling, you know, fashion and stuff like that is yeah. that same way in New York. You know, you can go to a certain, pull up on the, on the block, and you can, it looks like a flea market, like right. to us, right? right? And, and it looks like a flea market with fire, Fire clothes, like yeah, drip is out of this world. Same thing with the cannabis because you just mix it all in because they allow for this kind of like street merchant type of society there. Mm-hmm. That's a little bit different. You know, we would never see that in the middle of Dallas. No, no ever. Hey, as long as you get your vendor license, boom. Yeah, that's it. And see, that's the, I think that's the big difference. Like, so when you compare like Oklahoma 
AKA the Wild Wild West. Smoke Oklahoma. Smoke Oklahoma. And you compare New York. See, Oklahoma's license is 20, like to apply to get the license is $2,500. Man. New York, I don't know what the pricing is, but I know it's more expensive than that. And so when everybody and their mama is buying a, or getting a license in, mm-hmm. in Oklahoma, so everybody's competing versus in New York, there's a select amount of licenses, but the black market is running rampant. Um, I mean, the black market is running rampant in uh, Oklahoma, too, but it's not oversaturated with a whole bunch of like New York's not oversaturated with a whole bunch of legal businesses and black market. It's it's more um, Oklahoma is more just. A whole bunch of black market. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, let me see. The uh, the New York, it looks like it's uh, two thousand to get Let's, the license. Let's see. It's two thousand to get the license. New York, but you know, Corey and I were talking about this. We were on the phone like a couple weeks ago, Corey. We were talking about like how New York. You can you can say whatever you want to say about them, and I know the people in New York mm-hmm. may not rock with this statement, but there's a lot of states where they ain't doing shit. Like they ain't doing nothing's happening. So they they talk about how. Uh, oh yeah, make sure you have the help. And we just mentioned Deborah uh, that was out in Oklahoma uh, dealing with how slow the application process and all that stuff is. New York, they had the largest amount in grants uh, to give out. Um, and and though they they gone past that. Now they have other issues, but it seems like the support from the state level is there you know, more than it is in other markets. And there's no true cannabis industry because there's not just one industry. We say it all the time, but it's crazy how how much of how much infrastructure is lacking in most states for something that could make us all a lot of money. Right. Like y'all tripping like and so it's like either you for it or you're against it. If you're for it, then let's make sure that all this support is there so that's a real industry. Right. We, we met people that were uh, talking about unionizing in the cannabis industry. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a lot of that support, like it is for any other industry, needs to be there. And it seems like New York is at least trying to give them a little bit, some some level of support to say, hey, get, you get your fair shot. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I want to ask you all this question. Yeah. Two thousand dollars for a license is that is that a lot in this industry? No, that that's is cheap. cheap. Uh, okay, that's what I, I mean. Think. Like if you if you look at the opposite end of the spectrum, like look up look up California. Uh, matter of fact, I'll, I'll do it. Look up uh, a cultivation license in California. Yeah. No, we talk. I mean, the, the licensing fees can be extremely high. Like you know, like I'm, it, licensing fees could be in in the five. No, five. no, 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 no. no. It, Ten ten thousand? No, we're talking about hundreds of thousands. Yeah. It depends on per state. They could be in the five figures, the six figure number. So like when you go to Oklahoma and Corey mentioned the twenty five hundred dollars, that's a steal, bro. Like that that is a steal. And that's why o- Oklahoma complains now when we like when we were out in Tulsa about it just being overly saturated. Cause everybody came in and they found a way in, even if they weren't actually OG Oklahoma residents. So everybody's taking advantage of the low licensing why would you not exactly you know what i mean uh, we I right that. here in texas i mean that's not my bag or whatever but <laughs> but later down the road they're probably gonna it's probably gonna be you know a cap yeah and well, a minimum and a cap well yeah they'll just have to find a way to regulate it'd be federal yeah it'd have they, to be federal. they would have to figure out what they did wrong and but oklahoma's consistently working as well so we we, we can't demonize oklahoma because hey they ain't texas texas is like Y'all better just keep fighting. There's not going to be a bunch of relief on the way up. You better just keep fighting. It's going to cost more. Yeah, yeah, it's going to cost more. Right? Imagine a, a a license, like a, a cultivation license, and I'm not talking about for hemp, you know, a real cultivation license uh, in the sense of you can anything related to to the cannabis flower uh, in Texas once that's legalized. Man, first of all, they were so reluctant to make it happen. You know they're going to charge an arm, leg, and the rights to your your firstborn, you know, uh, for those license fees. Corey, what you find? So, I was actually wrong. Uh, so the it's based off of it's based off the gross annual revenue. 
So in California, in California. So all the application fees for the micro businesses are a thousand dollars, but it starts at five thousand for gross annual revenue of, of a million a million dollars or less. Mm. Say it again. Or it says less than or equal to a million dollars. The license fee is five thousand, and the application fee is a thousand. But once you hit a million and one, it goes to twelve thousand, and so in between, mm. like one and two million is twelve thousand. Two and three is twenty thousand. Okay. Three and four is thirty-two thousand. And then it goes all the way up until so you making more than eighty million, then you're paying three hundred thousand dollars for a license. Jeez, wait, how much? Three hundred thousand for a license. Damn, that's crazy. California yeah. get man, and like a lot of their they have, from my understanding, their sales tax. Is high is higher there in, in California. Therefore, they have to charge mm-hmm. more to make more. Yeah, and so that increases the cost of the product over there in, in on the West Coast. On the West Coast, man. Yeah. And speaking of California, man, that brings us to our last uh, not here on the belt for word on the street this week, and it's about the uh, twenty one eighty eight the Assembly Bill twenty one eighty eight that went into law. Uh, in 2022 because they're still having a major issue with discrimination from employers who uh, basically uh, aren't good with their employees getting high off the clock. See, that's, it's a gray area. So like, let's say from an employer perspective, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want your employee high while at work because we know people do it, right? Mm Mm-hmm. But at the same time, he, how, he looked at me when he said that. No, I didn't look at I'm getting caught up. <laughs> but hey, stop snitching. Right. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like because it stays in your system so long, like what they consume off the clock doesn't have an impact on what they do on the clock, but there's no way of proving it. And that's that's the thing. Yeah, well, things are changing right now in California because as of January 1st, okay. right? Yeah, we're in the new year now. So this bill went into effect. So Assembly Bill 2188 went into effect as of January 1st of 2024. Um, however, the new law only applies to some jobs. Specifically, it does not apply to those that work in the building and construction industry and positions that require federal background checks. So it ain't just a free fall for anybody with a California zip code. Um, it's kind of crazy. And people are asking questions. They're asking questions like, can I be fired or denied a job for using cannabis in my off hours? Well, essentially, according to Yahoo.com and Yahoo News, they're saying um, some employers cannot be fired, or some employees cannot be fired or withheld a job due to their personal use of marijuana off hours. Employees are employers are barred from discriminating against workers using drug screening tests because we know that that's just an easy one. Like you, you've never caught him high, but his his hoodie come smells like weed when he comes in, but he seems fine or whatever, but you're like, I don't like weed. You know what I'm saying? Um, and what do you, what do they do? Yeah. Go take a, take a drug test. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause you know, guess what happens in that little, that little handbook that they, they gave to you real quick. You were only worried about how much you were making per hour and they pass you that little handbook with the little signature right at the bottom. All you had to do was you like, yeah, flip, 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 flip. Sign. Yeah. Terms and and what they said in those terms and conditions is that uh, we can drug test you any goddamn time we want. That, that's <laughs> so what you going to do? So what you going to do? You going to quit? What? You know how hot, you know what the cost of living is like in California? Right. You going to quit? Okay. All right, big dog, you got it. But right. apparently you still needed this job because you're pretty upset about this drug test. So, <laughs> yeah. So deal with that. But they, they're saying that uh, they're barred from discriminating in that way using the screening test that they show have so what as long as it doesn't it's not in the terms and conditions they can't use it mm. i think i think it's based off i think as you were saying like certain industries yeah so 
You said construction, federal jobs, uh, what else? So you got uh, construction industry, uh, anything that has federal background checks attached to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and those that work in the yeah building and construction industry. So every so the loophole, <laughs> they go like, uh, yeah, man, I was trying to get a job at Pizza Hut, but they required a, a federal background. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. And, and because th a lot of those corporations who are not based in California, or especially the ones that are not, they're saying we do this all throughout the nation. All throughout the nation. What? And so I, I don't really know how that's really going to play a factor for the California based uh, locations or franchise or whatever of these businesses that do that at a corporate level. And then I know one of the other questions that was coming up here, what, what about medical? You know, like, can you, can you stop me from taking my medicine? Right. Hey, my medicine just happens to have a stench. I also want to know that. Yeah. Real talk. <laughs> the answer to that, according to yahoo.com is, um, well, since that's been signed into law, a uh, new law protects medical marijuana patients by prohibiting local governments from pro, uh, putting regulations or banning medicinal cannabis delivery. Delivery? They're like, I'm just smoking it, man. <laughs> like, as, as long as they're not in one of those other jobs. Dang. Uh, uh, well, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, cause that's, that's the loophole. That's the loophole. It's you require a federal uh, background check. Yeah. Well, okay. So if these, how how much does it cost for a federal background check? Not because that expensive. If, if, let's, let's if these, that. If these uh, companies, like these private companies, yeah, go federal. I mean, they go the federal route to get the uh, the loophole in. If it costs, I don't know, as much as a normal background or a little more. That's fair. Do it. But if it's like twice or more. Three, but times. I don't I also would say that I don't know if I have a California based business, depending on what it is and all that, if I would be cool with that bad PR with the people. You get what I'm saying? Because now imagine you didn't have federal background checks, but now you do. That'd be very true. And we know we all know it. And somebody call you out for it. It takes one TikTok video, bro, for it to be <laughs> for it to be all over. From one disgruntled employee, you know, it, it, it all it takes is one. And then so that's a lot of bad PR for a company. Damn. Yeah. I, I didn't really think about the social media age. Yeah. They, yeah. they can shut your shit down, bro. Yeah. You'd be, you be done. That is true. Yeah. Yeah, man. It, it, it's, it's pretty crazy at this point, man. Um, I know Corey is looking, trying to figure out how much, uh, what was the question? About cannabis, how much does it cost for a federal background check? Yeah, yeah, for an employer so, to actually I'm have. Saying that. something, but see, this is at the state level, man. But the, the other thing, of course, everybody's talking about is, uh, well, let's just revisit can California's laws on cannabis use and all that kind of stuff like that. They're good, you know. The fine is only up to a hundred dollars. Um, let's say if you're between eighteen and twenty-one years old. For a small amount, like eight. Yeah, they don't even say uh, an amount; just a small a small personal amount or whatever. Uh, there's also a legal limit on how much marijuana you can carry on hand. In California, you'll be penalized for having more than 28.5 grams of weed or more than 8 grams of concentrated cannabis. So unless you're gifting cannabis products to your loved ones, you need to have a license to sell weed. All right, so I'm seeing anywhere from 10 to $500 per so that can that can get pricey. Yeah, that can get pricey as as the employer. Yeah, yeah. But see, the thing is, like, any job, any civil servant job would be uh, disqualified. So any type of law enforcement, lawyer, any like, um, what do they call white white collar? Mm -hmm. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Um, one of those uh, uh, one of those type of jobs wouldn't qualify for um, being eligible to the employees be eligible to consume. Mm -hmm. But those are the people that need it too. Like they're not saying that those that aren't in that industry aren't in high stress situations, right? But you know, yeah, it's just. 
Mm, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's it tough. It 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 does suck. Like, and I'm speaking from somebody that gets drug tested. <laughs> Let's go. So like, I mean, it it sucks. Like, yeah. When especially you know when you know that it's better for you than alcohol, or it's better than for you than. Many other substances. That's what I was about say to say. Say it for the people in the back. Bro, say it for the people in the back. Like, we we, we kind of tired of that, man. Like, this whole, like, treat cannabis differently thing is, like, it's an old, old song. It's an old song to, you know, we've been going for some time, but. And see, it's a. Uh, what about, that's, that was my thing. What about the alcohol thing? Like, because how do you treat, you know, your employees that had a little drink before they came in, but they're not drunk. Versus how do you treat your employees that hit the J a few times? They ain't even burned the whole thing. I'm talking less than a half a J. You said you said they drank before they went to work? Before they went to work. They're, they're, let's stop you, acting like there's not people like, that drink never before met, they go to work. You don't have friends Come that right. do that? There's a lot of people. And if y'all don't think that people drink before they go into work, come on. <laughs> come on. Bruh. So, okay, you got the consumer side, you got the employer side. So I'm, I'm talking about from the employer side. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, look at it from all different angles. If you're the employer yeah. and your employees are drinking before work. Oh, I, we didn't say it's not problematic. Okay. We're saying let's, let's stop acting like that hasn't been a thing for how long now? People take drinks before they go in. The, not everybody, but aren't they? Like, I mean, if and and, and employers have smelt like you have a shift leader uh-huh. who's not the boss or the CEO or even the general manager, a shift leader who smelt the alcohol on your breath, but it's like manager's discretion, bro. He he be alright and let it go. I'm just wondering what's the difference between you smelt a little weed on him or you smelt a little whiskey on his breath. Yeah, I feel like. I feel like most employers, it depends. It depends. If they're short staffed, it's, it's, it's supply and demand, right? It's like, nah, bro, it's Black Friday weekend. Like we gonna everybody come in. Yeah, we're gonna we gonna uh re- readdress this in a in a few months. But right now we need you. So go take some Listerine and Bruh. <laughs> and we'll get your butt on the on the floor. Bruh. But like <laughs> but like if if let's say it's like a Target or something like that, right? On a normal Tuesday. On a normal Tuesday. On a normal Tuesday, I feel like uh, uh like let's say if you're at Target or some type of business like that, yeah, you getting fired. I feel like you getting fired or, or you getting written up and or fired or both. That's all I'm asking. If I come in smelling like weed, I want to see some of those HR manuals now. Cause you got to up. Guess what? When this gets updated, and now that uh 2188 is into law as of the 1st of 2024, now I'm going, okay, so now I want to see what happens. Do I get a write-up? Because we're not talking about anything illegal anymore, mm-hmm. right? So, so, I mean, it's, it's not legal. And in fact, these measures have been put into place. This bill has been put into law because they were. this was a problem. People were like, I could smell a little weed, or I think I could smell a little weed. Man, you eating Fritos. <laughs> no, but uh, but no, I'm I'm just saying that like I just want to see are is this a write up? Is it treated the same as alcohol? Because that's always been the argument. Treat it to look, just treat it, the just treat, it treat it, treat it like alcohol until you understand it. Once you understand it, I promise you, you'll treat it better than you treat alcohol. Right. Like as as a as a business overall, you're like, bro, this actually might help medicinally. There's people that smoke and don't realize like because it, it, there was no. Uh, no doctor attached to it. There was no medical uh, prescription attached to it, but they smoke and it actually makes them better with functionality. You know, it makes them more productive. It just depends on, there's people that really understand the flower. I ain't saying you went crazy and you know what I'm saying? You came straight from the party, you high off, you, you out of there. And then you went into work. I'm talking about those people that's like, I'm gonna try not to blow somebody's head off in here today. Bruh. I've been out the workforce for so long that it's it's hard for me to like I'm I'm listening, I'm trying to put myself in the situation of in the position of like being an employee and like 
having to to deal with that. When, when's the last time you've worked as a private citizen? Like I actually had to, so or I actually yeah. had to like Employee. show up in, yeah, in w- person w- and w- stuff. W- yeah, outside. So, outside, so like the military, but that's that's like a whole other world. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Exactly, but it, 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 you got to be able to kind of see it from both 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 points. Mm-hmm. As an employer, I get it, I get it. You don't want to have a bunch of people. Let's say you're talking about something. That, wait, do you drive a forklift for work? Oof. You know, like it's certain things you just don't want to be around a high person, like when when they, or or heavy mission. Yeah, have or give some level of accountability to somebody that you know is like out of there. Like, yeah, I get that part. But then at the same time, we just can't act like, you know, the discrimination part of it doesn't exist. And it does. And I'm glad that uh, Assembly Bill 2188 is into into law, man. Good for them. Hopefully Texas can follow. You say that with everything. Hopefully Texas can follow. Yeah. Um, But oh, real quick, before we get off this and we and we, you know, transition out. It says, according to the bill, employers still have the right to maintain a drug and alcohol free workspace. Right. Which nobody's saying, you know, opposing that as specified in section in a section of it. (laughs) Just understand that. Um, Shout out to Carter for teaching y'all how to get around. uh, That's that's what I was saying. I was like, (laughs) I was thinking, I was like. Let's, let's ask these questions. Yeah, yeah. If you if you come in, and see, and that's it's tough because it's like some people smoke so much that everything around them smells like weed, right? It's, kind of, it's like some people have like cigarettes, yeah, cigarettes and pets and stuff mm-hmm. like that. You just smell like your environment versus you actually consuming. So that's that's the tough thing about it because like open those windows, yeah, because like some some places like. You stand out. You'll stand out. Again, I, I say Target because I think Target is like one of those like really just like bureaucratic, like uptight, <laughs> like just how they operate. Yeah. Right? I don't know about that. Well, the, the management side, like the, not the management, the, the, but the, the structure, structure of it. Yes. The structure yes. of it. Okay. And like their HR and all that stuff. No, um, no, yeah, you're right. And targets. Like, I forgot my point. But it's a lot of, no, it's a lot of other. Uh, employers s- similar to Target, where oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 about just how how they operate. Did you catch it? Yeah, yeah. It's just like if if you're in Target and you smell like you're you smell like loud, and you like smell two pounds of that. Yeah, oh, and, you know, and, and you walking around, and then you you got the customers walking by you. Oh, they're yeah, they're gonna say something. It's like uh, what's his name, Linus, Linus, and Charlie Brown. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You don't know, like, Lion is the real dirty dude. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, gotcha. like... You could just say that. You could just say that. Like, like, his... his We're like, also far removed from our childhood, clearly. Yes. <laughs> We've only taken the boondocks with us, everybody. We, listen, I don't I don't have kids, so... <laughs> you right. <laughs> That's fair. You That's right. fair. So, like, yeah, it's like Lion is where he's walking around, and you can see, like, the stench on him everywhere he goes, like, in a sense, that's that employee yeah. walking around where they're going... And then I guess I guess in this situation, I'm kind of thinking about it, not like the irresponsible smoker, the irresponsible. You know what I mean? I, when you say discrimination, I'm thinking you actually could not tell whatever like that. You just found you had some information like that social could, media. Uh, you see, had information okay. yeah. that he, they consume off the clock. In fact, this yeah. is not even a person that comes in hot because okay. that's really what uh, Assembly Bill 2188 protects. It protects discrimination from an uh, off duty smoker. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm with you on that. That, like, that, yeah. that ain't cool. Yeah. Like, if you, like, bro, you you judging me off my IG. Yeah. If that can protect the socials, great. Bro, yeah. You, you judging me because so and so said something, but I'm here. You, like, you haven't seen any type of uh, changes in, in how I operate. I'm, you know, I'm a, a, the standard employee yeah. that you're supposed to be, right? I'm, I'm doing my job, no issues. Why are you coming at me with this BS when yeah. it's no problem? That, yeah, that, and that right there. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, when I hear discrimination, I don't think somebody is actually in the wrong. And then <laughs> they get disciplined for it. No, discrimination, I'm thinking, bro, 
it was me, and there's no difference between me and him, right? But I got singled out because of this. Okay, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, I'm Yeah, I'm with that. Like, yeah, but I am too. The, the individuals that, that are drinking and smoking right before shift. You wild, bro. You, you, bro. You, you gotta, okay, you gotta think, though. A lot of people drink at lunchtime, and they go back. You never do, been in the work? Do they? Oh, that's a fact. Okay, I've been I've been in the car industry for about seven years. That's ten ninety nine though. They, there's it's, people that keep alcohol no, in their desk. That's ten ninety nine though. You you make your own money. What are you talking about? The car the car industry. Yeah, I'm but, talking. But you still you're still employees with that with that car dealership. And you're driving cars. True. You, you're drinking at lunchtime and you're going back to test drive cars. <laughs> like what? But you ain't driving a car. You ride in the car. No, you you you, you drive. You, you drive. You, them? you go to the place, then you then you pull up pull pull out, or you get out of the car, and just flip flip seats. Oh, I ain't never did that. <laughs> but it's right. Not, not everybody does it. Yeah. You know, just like not everybody smokers. Not everybody's gonna smoke that close to their shift uh-huh. and things like that. Uh-huh. But to your point, the social media thing. If it protects social. Man, let us know. Hey, somebody from California, man, y'all tap in with us, drop a comment or something like that. Let us know what we don't know about Assembly Bill 2188 and what's going on in California. We definitely owe y'all a visit or 10. So, uh, man, y'all definitely top, uh, chop in, uh, ch- tap in, tap in to chop it up with the Canna Bros. And we appreciate you jamming out for this version of Word on the Street. That's somebody getting taken out by the employer because they smelled that weed. <laughs> <laughs> You're out of there. Now, you know, I got to ask the question, man. What's life been like, man? Every Everything good? You know, it's one thing that we haven't gotten to this episode. Life has been good, man. I mean, it's day two of 2024. Mm, boy. Um, had leg, did leg day today. Yeah. So that, it's the, you know, what? and it was the gym crazy. You know what? Surprisingly not, but you know, I got so it's a couple of things. One of my one of my it's tax season, so you know, I'm I'm on this super grind mode. And so to maximize my day, I gotta get to the gym earlier. So yep. uh back when I was uh earlier, I guess a year ago from now, you know, I was hitting that gym every day. I was out the gym by like seven thirty, eight o'clock Ooh. every day. What's your gym? Is it planet fitness? No, it's a local gym in uh, Roy City. It's just like a little local gym. But, like, I was out the gym um, by 7.30, 8, 7.30, 8 o'clock. But I try to get there earlier now just so, like, I got to take my kids to daycare and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I got there. It wasn't that many people there, first off. Um, Good. And then uh, it's funny, though. I walk in, and there's a gentleman uh, explaining to um, these ladies, like, I guess like some certain exercises and stuff, right? So like for me, sounds like I, a good story, bro. I, <laughs> it sounds like another episode of Barbershop Stories with Corey. I'm sorry. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> so like I don't work out with headphones. Okay. And, your, your, your and choice. Yeah, I was told that I'm uh an um, anomaly. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I, that's why I know all these conversations. Cause I don't work out with headphones. Hey, he be getting that material just for y'all. Thanks for tuning into the Cannon Brothers podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so like I walk in and that's you know, that's the first thing I hear. And then uh like I it's funny because I internally I get mad. It's like like why y'all why y'all just why y'all talking in the gym, man? Like get to work. Like why why <laughs> uh, I'm different. You get to work. I'm different. Like, look, look, get like this ain't a hangout spot. Get to work and, and get out, right? Okay. Um, so yeah, he's talking to these girls. I'm like, all right, whatever. I, I get start working out and stuff like that. And then uh I hear one of the girls, she's like, I don't know what to do. Like I don't know what workout to do or, or anything like that. Bruh. And I'm like, bro, 
y'all killing me right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, <laughs> like, I, you know, I'm, I'm I should in... have bought headphones. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I'm, I, I stay in my headspace because I don't want to feel like I, I have to rely on an external device for me to succeed. So I, I just get rid of all external distractions, right? Okay. But I'm I'm listening to her, and, she, and you know, it's, you got another lady. It's like, it's all right. You know, getting here is half the battle, which I don't necessarily disagree. That sounds like somebody's going to be gone by February. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you ain't lying, though. <laughs> she, uh, she won't make it to the second month of the year. <laughs> like, I, it, getting to the gym is hard. But once you're there, man, it's like, you got to get to work, like. And then just as the, the workout progressed, man, they, they gossiping about this girl, how like, and you know they gossiping, I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't really, uh, I don't know much about her, and I hate to say anything ill about so-and-so, but, you know. Oh, my God. She's like, she's she's kind of a hoe. I'm like, Cheryl, if you don't get your ass out this <laughs> guy. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? <laughs> Get your ass on. Yeah, get your ass on. Like, why y'all talking right now? <laughs> hey, look, 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 look. I'm in this thing. I'm in this thing. I walk in this room, uh, and they got like all the like, uh, all these machines, and I got to do leg curls, right? Like, this is like the laying down leg curls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's another lady in there, and then it's and she, you know she's she's doing her work or whatnot, and yeah. then this other lady walks. And she's like, all right, hey, I'm heading out, you know, la 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 la. But real quick, before I let you know, I leave. I wanted to talk to you. Uh, you know, I, I need my hair done in February, Bruh. February first. And I was trying to see if you had any appointments, any bookings. La 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 la. la. Uh, I want to get these. I want to dye my hair and get this. I'm like, bro. But again, I know headphones would have. Yeah, it, it sounds like. Most of this could be solved with headphones. No, nah, bro, but I can't do it. If you're a company out there that's looking to sponsor the Canna Bros podcast <laughs> and your product is the most fire headphones we've ever seen, make sure you hit us up, man. You can go ahead and reach out to us at thecannabros at gmail.com or you can hit us in the DMs. Back to the barbershop store. I mean, that's, that's just pretty much it, man. It's like when I go to the gym, like I, I don't... I don't talk to nobody, ain't no, like, no head nods, no, like, I'm I'm there, like. I'm just so surprised that you don't work out with headphones. Yeah, if you're, I'm if, like, if you're that. You, you love know. Jeezy. Why would you not lift up? I feel like you could lift, bro, you could probably go a couple extra, <laughs> extra reps. No, extra sets, just because. <laughs> you know, so, like, I used to, like, like at the beginning of the, was it last year? At the beginning of last year, um, I was at a, no, it wasn't even. Maybe it was a couple years ago. Um, I used to wear headphones. Like I had like the down south Georgia hits going. Yeah, you did. Like throw it up, throw okay. it up. You know, I, I and I would go and you pass the Troy and all. That. Yeah, man, I, and and I go hard. And then and the pain. he had I, that one on there too. <laughs> <laughs> and Fuck. then, I, and then I lost my headphones. And so I was like, all right, well, I can't not go to the gym because I ain't got no headphones. Mm, he, so, adaptation so, killed it. So I, I went there. But, like, it's kind of like um, it's a crutch. Like, headphones are a crutch when you're in the gym because, like, if you can't work out, if you can't work out without the headphones, then you're dependent on the headphones. What is he saying? <laughs> Versus, like, think about it. Think about it. If you don't need the headphones, you can work out anywhere. Right? I don't need the shorts I'm wearing either. <laughs> you don't, you don't, don't, you, don't you don't need the shorts. But you don't need like the shorts don't like the shorts don't define your workout. Like people use like people use the headphones because they need them. They need the I gotta get pumped up or I gotta have some external source. Or they just don't want to hear everybody's conversations about getting their hair done. See. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, you know what? That that's true. That's that's a that is a benefit. That's a perk of of the, the headphones, right? You, you don't hear the grunts. You don't hear other people 
It's you conversations. Because you can listen to anything in the world, any yeah. kind of audio. You could be listening to white, like white noise. <laughs> you could be listening to, yeah. you could be listening to uh, just peaceful K-pop spa sounds, right? So yeah. the only thing is, if you, I mean, you could be listening to an instrumental. So, yeah. you, you know, you're like, I don't need what you're saying to help me out. But I do need to be in my own bubble in my zone because she keep talking about the swoosh and all this other stuff. She and and trying to get it done before Valentine's Day because she don't want to have her hair, her wig looking crazy. See, Millsap's built differently. He wears tank tops in the in December. Talk about it, <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. So he's just built differently. Like he he can he can have no music and be fine. It's, it's just one of those things. It's like it makes you more mentally strong. It's like you're you're a compl- There's a world of distractions out there, right? But you got to focus. You you got to have the mental fortitude to <laughs> your face. You got to have that <laughs> mental fortitude to get through your workout, and you got to be in tune with your body because now you. Now you have to be more in tune with your breathing. You got to be more in tune with your form and everything versus when you have your headphones. A lot of times you can't focus on all that stuff because you're lost. You're lost in the music. But who's lost in the music while they're working out? A lot of people. You ain't working who's, out right then. Who, whose fault is that? Who, yeah, whose fault is that? <laughs> That, 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 it ain't. That, it ain't the uh, the music. It's like it's like okay. Yeah, uh, like if you can't, I'm like you need to meditate. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting here going, you need to meditate because you should be able to have headphones on and it not and have stop a you. Clear, clear mind still. Yeah, like, like you're. Yeah, I li- yeah. Sometimes music is just it, noise. You just it's a. Yeah, but if you go harder, so a lot of people use music. Cause it helps them go hard. It gets them out their mind. It gets them out their head, so they can work out. Which I understand that. But now I, these people now are in my head. The people I'm hearing because I don't have headphones on, in the gym, mm-hmm. they're in my head. And I would love to block them out because that's the noise I don't need. I'm good noise. That's so not it, good noise. Yeah. <laughs> like, so it it almost got a got a cramp. Uh, bro, <laughs> he got he got a crown podcasting. Hey, at, at this point, the podcast, the, the Canterbury's podcast is now a uh, sponsor by. <laughs> we, we need a uh, a standing desk sponsor, apparently. Right, <laughs> right. But yeah, man, I just I just say that to say, like, and and I'm not talking down on anybody that wears headphones, right? Because I understand that's that's normal, but I just think it makes you. It's, it's another type of uh, uh, mental strength to be able to get in there without the headphones. Because it's like, I don't need, like, no matter what distractions are going on, I still went hard in the gym, even with Cheryl over here talking about whatever Cheryl was talking about, right? <laughs> Color of her hair. hair her hair. Yeah. Her, her yeah. Hair. Hey, look, she's talking about the, the, her hair. I'm still, like, going hard on this, this hamstring curl. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, I'm just like, Hey man, get to work. In my that's that's what's irritating me. It's not the conversation per se. It's like you're not there to work out. Why and why are you here? Yeah. Yeah, you you like But why does that so if 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 the gym is so not that packed or it's empty, why does it frustrate you that much? Why do Oh, cuz you you can clearly hear them. If it was more people in the gym, it would just be noise, or music. Do they have music in the gym? Sometimes they have music in the gym, but it's like it's it's not like it's like, and that could throw you off too. The yeah. wrong music, I'd be like, bro, come on, bro. But, but see, when you don't wear headphones, everything again, you just like it doesn't matter. Wrong music, I feel you. BS conversation, it, it, like that's what I'm saying. Any environment, same thing with running. If you can run without headphones, you can run anywhere. Versus some people like, nah, I need headphones. I get tired faster without headphones. Some people feel that way, though. For real? I'm serious. Some people feel that way. Like, because it's, it's a mental distraction for them. It's like, they think that, like, because, I mean, working out is 80% mental. Mm-hmm. Right? And so, if you can get out your head, sometimes it allows people to push further. But when you take out that distraction and you have to completely rely on your mind, then... You know what you're capable of 
because it's like you there's no external factor there it's just you like making it happen and then you get in tune you get more in tune with your body okay like you, hey look man I get it everybody to each his own the goal is yeah. whatever goal you set for your health and maybe it's some, maybe it's just a cosmetic thing of why you're in the gym or everybody got their different reasons. But if you reach your goals, however you get there, shout out to y'all. But don't, here's one thing we don't want to be a factor is the fact that you set a new year resolution. Uh, new, like that's just not something <laughs> I'll be like, bro, what, what's the point of setting the new year's resolutions? I'm always disappointed. Like so, so it sounds like you need you need a reason to set goals and, and hold yourself accountable. So like, what happens in October? So what happens in August? Right, mm-hmm. and, and so I'm, I, I'm pro New Year's resolution. Th- God, <laughs> mother- I I am I am like it's because it gets. <laughs> You're talking so much shit. <laughs> about what you need. I, what I was about to say, and I was about to bring it back around to this, so, <laughs> which was just. Like, I feel that New Year's resolutions are they're your they're my version of what headphones are. <laughs> so so this is this is a thing. I like I make a res I was resolution. I like I make lists, I hold myself accountable. I've been doing this all year. Did it, you know, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, so because it's January first, yeah, I'm supposed to have, I have some added power or something like that. It is placebo. It it is it, no, it's completely placebo. But but this is for the people that actually go through with their resolutions. So it's like if you just every year you make a new resolution, you don't do nothing, or you fizzle out every time. Which is most start, people. Which, which which is most people, yeah. But if let's say like I'm say for for me, right? Okay. I say okay, so like this year for me, I want to be a better husband, right? I wasn't a bad husband. Right, I wasn't a shitty husband at all. Okay, but I just want to be a like. Okay, let me self reflect. Let me self reflect about my past year. Okay, my past time around the sun. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, I could have improved in a couple areas. So let me take this as my time to take the steps necessary. Day by day to become a better husband. It's a checkpoint. That's that's fine. Now I got I do got a question on that. Yeah. Do y'all think that it's more? What makes more sense? Making up resolutions because it's January first, or making up resolutions because you because it's your birthday, because you just turned a year older. Because you say that you know trips around the sun and stuff. I can't. I'm not mu- much wiser. My birthday is on. Uh, let's say well, it's not really, but. December 29th. <laughs> and so, like, is it more, is it, do y'all think it's Both. more beneficial be, uh, happening on the 1st of January or on your actual birthday? Because that's a clock that you actually keep your entire life. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's the same thing. Like, if you can set, you can have life goals or life resolutions for both. Like you can have a, a New Year's resolution. This is what I want to get better for this. The uh, like for me, another thing for me is like um, the word for the year is consistency, right? So it's like be consistent. Let's let's use consistency. Let's work on consistency so that by this time next year, I can see like how far I've come. Right. It's it, it's a measuring stick. Now, if you choose a calendar year or a fiscal year, which would be your birthday. So from April 1st to April 1st. Mm-hmm. Regardless, it's, it's the same thing, but it's it's a measuring stick to determine how well you did for whatever you're trying to accomplish. OK, I'm more of the birthday side. Birthday to birthday. Because if you're talking about because goals for me. It's age. It's Personally, it's age for me. Like, mm-hmm. This is where I want to be in my And in, a lot of people do my, it by yeah. 30, mm-hmm. by 40, mm-hmm. by 50. Yeah. But so, yeah, the the year or the 
the New Year's resolution can just be thrown in the trash if if I had a say in it. Mm-hmm. But I did Google. Twenty three percent people quit their resolution by the end of the first week. Lord, I believe that. And forty three percent quit by the end of January. And that was osu.edu. Now, and that's my thing. You, you know what's 43? crazy? Forty three percent quit by the end of the month, right? Mm-hmm. So I guess when when you when I'm speaking about like when I'm I'm put the way I'm posing this question, yeah, is not. Hey, Corey, do not motivate yourself. Do not set a goal that you actually are accountable for and you make it happen, right? My thing is publicly. Yeah. The general public. That's the truth about the general public. So what happens is your your feed, your social media feed, your timeline, your email inbox, everything gets crowded with what? New Year's resolution this, New Year's resolution that. No post in February. You don't, but about that same resolution. Because what's the easiest thing? Monthly check-in. Mm-hmm. So I know some people that do use it. And I say, look, if you are having a hard time being motivated, you need a way to motivate yourself. I get it. That's why I laugh when you say you're for New Year resolution, but not for headphones. Because I was like, so. <laughs> so you do need a motivation, you know. So, But no, nah, it's, um, that's, the, I think, the thing that makes me go. Man, come on. Right, I ain't making a resolution. I'm not making a resolution because you told me to make a resolution right. or you. That makes no sense. Right. I need to be motivated to say I need to be better. That may randomly happen for me in the middle of June. Mm-hmm. Just because. Because where I'm at with my business, where I'm at with my marriage, my life, a fatherhood, whatever the goal is that I'm trying to achieve, where I'm at financially, my bank account don't look right in September. I'm not waiting till January 1st to do something about it. What happens to a lot of people is they do. Yeah, they, they, that's they, wild. It's they, reactive, not proactive. Right? Yeah, they will mm-hmm. literally, it'll, they'll be like December 15th, and they're like, I'm going to start eating right in two weeks. You'll be like, guess what's going to happen? You're going to do that for, they, you're going to be one of the 43%, or you're going to be one of that, tw- was it 20-something percent that quit within the first week? Because the truth of the matter is you didn't gear up. There was no actual change. You just pretended to hit a switch and you lied to yourself and you couldn't even hold yourself accountable to that. So, like, if you really want to eat better, it's right now. Can I offer a paradigm shift, though? Sure. 57% do keep it past January. No. If he kept going, that uh, 20 more percent dropped out by February. I said past January. (laughs) I'm I'm just saying the majority of people keep it past January. For one month, for a 12-month year? I'm just saying, like that. I mean, we're going into <laughs> August. We're going into August with 57. Failure. Do you have? Do you have? Right, look, Carter. Look up how many people actually completed, like uh, 12 months later, by January 1st of the following year, or December 31st of the end of that year. How many people actually complete, or they reach their goals? Nine percent. Okay. Hey, sounds like a failure to me, folks. Hey, that was nine percent. You know, you know what that nine percent does. So, you got make mentality. They work out with no headphones. <laughs> 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 I, man, we appreciate y'all uh, tuning in to the Canter Bros podcast. Of course, man, uh, we are the Canter Bros Media, the Canter Bros in general, man. You know how we rock. Uh, once again, uh, we need to make sure that you hit that subscribe button, tap that like, and share the goodness with your crew. You know, uh, we're building a movement here, and we want you all into it. And we want you also to have a prosperous, productive 2024. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, it's tax season. Yeah. But you know what? More importantly, you know, tax season comes and goes. But what people don't talk about is tax planning. Tax planning is what makes your tax season, right? It may, that's what sets your taxes up for success. It's you you working, sitting down with somebody, they go over your financial situation, your individual and or business, and they break it down, break a create a plan, create a projection for you, strategy, and they make sure that you accomplish your New Year's resolution. Be proactive, not reactive. That's exactly what it is. 
So I want I wanted to drop those little can of nugs in there just so um the people out there listening know that hey, it's the start of the year, it's the perfect time for you as a new year's resolution. Start your tax planning for 2024. We'll see y'all next week. I try to hit a random and I missed. <laughs> I tried it. I tried to drop the mic. It didn't happen. <laughs> see y'all next week, man. Peace.